concept number one. Yeah, number one of building your golf swing, step you know, by step. First, yeah, yeah, the first task or the first path, what you have to learn first, the first skill, okay? Club face and a ball. Ball runs into the face, or the club face runs into the ball on a path with the face in an angle to make the ball go where you want it to go. Yeah. That's what the game is. Mm -hmm. Okay, what connects you to this? Well, the club shaft. Well, yep. now we've got a round grip on a shaft and an angled face. People are lost. Mm -hmm. Here's how a club face fits in your hand. That's the orientation. So I set a club face in my hand. Now, if I got a ball sitting on the ground and I want this club to hit it lower than it's designed, I take loft off. Yep. Add loft, curve it left, curve it right. Okay, it sits in my left hand like this. Take loft off, add loft, curve it left, curve it right, both hands. Take loft off, up, left, right. So the first thing is to take people, put a club face in their hands so they can feel the face. Now there have been people, A.J. Bonner talked about this, He's, and he just drew a club face. Well, you need to hold it. It fits perfectly, doesn't it? Yeah, it's perfect. It just, it just it fits in a human hand very perfectly. Right, like that. Mm -hmm. So here's all you're doing. When you hit a golf ball, really, this makes it go low, mm -hmm. this makes it go high, this curves it left and this curves it right. Mm -hmm. Now all you gotta do is get your arms swinging on the right path and your hands control the face, game over. Yeah. That's what I knew as a kid. Mm -hmm. So when I set up to a ball, when we take beginners, now we get their hands on the club yep. and now we get them to feel the club face and you have them stand there and it usually should be putting first and all they do is they start to, where do you want the ball to go? I want it to go to the left. So they feel the face in their hands. They're feeling this. This yeah. is how I play. Yeah. So I'm looking at that ball. If I want it to go left, all I have to do is make my hands turn the face left and the ball goes left. Yep. And then I say, okay, let's make the ball go straight. So they make the ball go straight. Yep. Make the ball go to the right. So all you're doing is you're feeling the face in your hands. Now, if somebody can't stand here and do that, <laughs> they're, in, they're in trouble. Uh, yeah. All yeah. that isn't going to make you better. Right. So first concept, hands control the face. Here's how the club face fits in your hands. Mm -hmm. Can you run the club face into the ball? It's like playing mm -hmm. table tennis yep. or any of them. It's controlling a racket. You don't control a ping pong racket with your shoulders. Yeah. In uh, the church, there's this concept called sin qua na, which means without this, nothing. And okay. that's what this would be. Yeah. You watch the tour guys, okay? This whole, th this stuff you see them doing, what exactly is this? What is all that about? Yeah. It's about hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these guys have spent so much time around a club face yep. that that club face is just, is my extended, my hand. Yep. So when they're looking at a ball, no matter how they move their bodies, I could do anything I want to do with my body because my hands are so good whether my body's here or it's here, yep. I can figure out how I to can, get it on that ball. Yeah. yeah, I could make any kind of move you want me to make, and I could probably still get the club face on the ball and get it going pretty straight. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first and most important thing, this is the game. And it's played from here down. Yep. That's the most important part. Yeah. If this doesn't work, shifting your weight, turning your hips, all that is of no value. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to do calculus and you can't do basic math. Yeah, like a lot of people are trying to, uh, for a long time you were talking about like a big muscles dominated swing. Yeah. But I think you're saying people have a lot more success if they let their hand run the show and not, and not go all the way up the chain yeah. to somewhere deeper. If you take somebody, yeah. if you take somebody and you say, okay, I got a can in my hands here. Yep. Here's the bottom of the can, here's a shelf. Take the can and put it on the shelf. Yep. I've never seen anybody do this. <laughs> I've seen that on the golf course, though. Well, I have, too. Yeah. So if, if the task is to do that, uh -huh. all of a sudden this goes, what do I have to do to accommodate that task? Now, if I take the can off the shelf and I put it on this shelf over here, mm -hmm. it's unlikely that I'm going to take it off and this is going to go and this won't move. Yeah. Okay, so in essence, with a golf swing, if your hands start to understand how to control the face, and they start from impact, they start making, okay, so here's how the impact, what my hands are starting to do, is mm -hmm. you start making longer swings, yep. your body starts to accommodate what it has to do to run the club into the ball. This guy hit so many perfect shots. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching that. Stay tuned because right after this little message that I'm doing, there's gonna be a preview of some of Mike's part in The Source of Power. You guys have heard about The Source of Power if you watch his channel. It is a video instruction series, so it's like four or five different videos from four different amazing golf instructors who all have the same idea about how power should be generated in the swing. So now included in The Source of Power, you'll also get all the raw footage from when I went and talked to Mike for the day. So it is a lot of extra stuff, some, some of which has been cut out, that I think you'll really like. So click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. The more these lines intersect, the, the hip impact, comes up and the yeah. shoulders go down, which you're seeing a lot of that now with trying to make outward force. But when this happens, now let's think about your spine. Now it's like this, and you're trying to twist it. Mm -hmm. Well, now your mid-thoracic back can't, can't rotate, so where's all that force going? Right in your lower lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. So the more, when you swing, if you swing correctly, the further these two lines, the further out they intersect, the less pressure there's going to be on your back. The closer they intersect, the more bend and the, the more, more pressure. Bend, yeah. The more pressure. Yep. Okay, so like I say, I, I can't argue with doing some of those things might create more force, but it's also creating more of this, which is creating more of this, which is creating more pressure in your lower back. Pretty right. simple. There's uh, exercises and things that people are trying to do to hold that off maybe a, a few months or years later. Yeah. yeah. But eventually, it, you're saying it will catch up no, to you. No, it will catch up. And, and uh, that, move, that move will, will catch up. Will break anyone. It Any, will. Yeah. And, and, and trying to get stronger is kind of a funny thing, because let's get stronger to protect our backs, well, the getting stronger makes you able to create more force, which just offsets more it anyway. Yeah. So, so, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of these deals where, now I will show you in a minute here, how we can create a tremendous amount of speed with virtually no pressure on your lower back, which is what Jack understood, it's what Sneed understood, and I'll show you a couple of positions, and once, you, once people see them, almost everybody that comes to me, when they see it and they understand it, they go, man, now I'm swinging and I don't even feel like I'm swinging. I don't even feel like I'm moving my body. And their body is moving more than it was before. 